Hey everybody, it's Barry, and today let's talk about connecting pro sound gear to consumer audio gear. And the reason that brings this up is because once again I did a dumb thing that didn't work out. Sometimes it works out, usually it doesn't, this time it didn't, and I knew better. And it's okay to do dumb things and then learn from your mistakes. What's not okay is to keep doing the dumb thing over and over and expecting a different result. Uh, kind of like voting, I suppose. But <laughs> anyway, so I want to talk about three ways that you can connect your pro audio equipment to consumer audio equipment and uh, whether or not you're going to get a good result. Uh, the different methods you can do this and the expectations you can have from it. Now, I did a video already on connecting a ProSound power amplifier to your consumer audio equipment. And you can check out that video if you're interested. You see, the thing that is an issue between connecting ProSound gear to consumer audio gear is the audio signals are a little different between the two. In ProSound gear, we're dealing with connectors that look probably like this, a three pin XLR connector, possibly a tip ring sleeve quarter inch connector, which would be electrically equivalent. So this is a balanced signal. It's got a ground and two signal lines and the two signals are equal but opposite of each other. And in a pro sound signal, it's expecting to drive a low impedance load. So the signal actually has a little bit of energy behind it, a little bit of power to push that signal into the receiving piece of equipment. In the consumer audio world, we're most likely dealing with connectors like these guys, which are RCA pin connectors, which is just simply a ground on the outside and a signal conductor on the middle. And this is a high impedance connection, meaning that the receiving equipment, the equipment that is receiving the signal, isn't putting much load on the, uh, the output device at all. And so if we're going to go from consumer equipment into a ProSound power amplifier, the ProSound amplifier is going to apply a little bit of load to that signal, and it's expecting a, a higher signal level than the consumer equipment normally delivers. And so in order to properly translate that signal from consumer type audio signals to pro sound signals, we need to boost the signal level and we need to increase its drive so it can drive into a low impedance load. And we need to transform an unbalanced signal into a balanced signal, which is two signals really equal and opposite on a three wire connector. We can't just do that with a piece of wire and some connectors on it. We actually need some active electronics to make that transformation of signal. And so I talk about that in the other video. In this video, let's talk about if you wanted to connect a pro sound piece of equipment and have its output go into your consumer audio system. Now one would think, according to the science, that the pro sound gear has a high signal output and it can drive a significant load. And so therefore it should have no problem at all driving that signal right into your consumer electronics, no problem. And you'll find lots of cables and adapters out there that go from a three wire connector down to a two wire connector and make that transformation. So you'd have a, an adapter or a cable that has three pin XLR on one side of it and maybe RCA phono plug on the other and you can just plug those devices directly together and all should be well or so they say but that hasn't been my experience now why would we want to do something like this anyway maybe you have a pro sound mixer and you'd like to send the output of that mixer into your consumer audio system in my case I have a focus right audio interface box attached to my computer. And then about 10 feet away, I've got a consumer hi-fi system that I want to play that material back through. So I need to connect the, Pro, the Focusrite box into the consumer audio system. And the Focusrite box has balanced pro audio type signals coming out of it on 
tip ring sleeve quarter inch connectors. So I just tried to connect those two devices together directly and I didn't get the results I was really hoping for. The uh, results that I got was a signal that worked pretty well except that it had a high noise floor. Um, not a dramatically high noise floor but not that completely pristine quiet noise floor that I'm looking for. The was picking up some noise from the environment. So there are three different ways that we could transform this pro sound signal into a consumer audio type signal. Now the first issue is that the pro sound signal is a higher level than consumer audio. It's about a 10 dB difference. Now when we're talking dBs we're always talking how much louder or quieter a signal is compared to some reference. DBs are not an absolute standard. They're always referenced against some reference level. And in the world of pro audio versus consumer audio, we use different references. So it's a little bit difficult to talk DBs in one world versus DBs in another and really know what we're talking about unless we're real clear on what reference we're basing our DB spec on. This is a little bit like if I was to mention to my friend that uh, the forecast is that tomorrow it's going to be 28 degrees outside. If I said this to one of my friends within the United States, they'd say, oh, it's going to be a pretty cool day. Better grab a coat. If I was talking to a friend in Europe, he'd probably think, oh, I'm saying it's going to be a pretty warm day. Good day for shorts and sandals. Because we're not talking about the same standard. So let's talk about a measurement that is on the same standard, which would be volts. Now, when we talk volts, it's the same chart, the same standard of volts, whether or not we're talking about car audio at 12 volts, or we're building a house and we're worried about 120 or 240 volt wiring, or if we're dealing with electronics, volts or volts. So in the world of pro audio, the audio signal that's on the line is probably going to be somewhere in the vicinity of about a volt. Assuming that you've got things turned up enough that the meters in your mixer are peaking somewhere around zero dB, according to the mixer, that's going to be about a volt on the signal cables, generally, more or less. In the consumer audio world, the connections between equipment and the audio signal that's passing back and forth between them is probably going to be in the vicinity of a tenth of a volt, maybe two tenths of a volt. So you can see there's a disparity there between pro audio and consumer audio. And so if I take a one volt signal from my pro audio system and put it into my consumer audio system, that's going to be a pretty hot signal. Now it's not going to be so severe that it's going to cause a fire it's probably not so severe that it's even going to cause overload and distortion in the consumer audio equipment. There's probably ample headroom. So you'll probably be fine. But in the consumer audio system, you're probably going to find yourself running the volume control quite a bit lower than you normally would for a certain amount of output because your input signal is going to be pretty hot. The other issue is that with pro audio, it's expecting to drive into a a somewhat significant load, somewhere in the vicinity of around 600 ohms. So that signal has a little bit of power behind it, a little bit of force to push it into the receiving piece of equipment. In consumer audio, we're usually talking 50,000 ohms or thereabouts, a very high impedance input. So the pro audio system should be able to push that signal into the consumer audio system, no problem at all. It's no load hardly at all on the signal. Now there are some pro audio pieces of gear that really expect that load to be there. And if that load isn't there, if you will, the output isn't damped correctly. And it just doesn't really work as well as it should, as if it was being driven into a proper load. But there's a lot of equipment that is very stable and just doesn't care. And if you put it into the load, that's great. If there's no load, well, it still renders the signal pretty accurately. So the pro audio gear should have no problem pushing that signal right into the consumer gear without um, 
being overloaded. The Pro Audio Gear also has a un, it has a balanced output. So you got two signal lines. In this XLR connector, you got pins one, two, and three. Pin one is ground, two and three are the signal lines. And the signals are equal and opposite of each other. And that's a noise reduction tool. And so if we were going to just connect this directly to a consumer audio system, we just use one of those two signals. Some Pro Audio gear is perfectly fine with just having a load on one of those lines. But some gear doesn't really like having one of those sides unloaded and that can increase the distortion in the output. So in the case of my Focusrite audio output box scenario, I have my computer with the Focusrite box on it and it's attached to a computer. Computers are notoriously electrically noisy devices. They generate a lot of radio frequency, electrical energy, and that can impart noise into your audio. The Focusrite box, and there is nothing wrong with the Focusrite box. It works fine. It sounds good. If I was to purchase another audio interface box, would I purchase another Focusrite box? Maybe. I think there are better choices at higher price points. But I've got nothing wrong, no, nothing bad to say about the Focusrite box. It's working fine. It has a connection that is its output, and then I need to run about 10 or 12 feet over to the other side of the room to where the audio system is. And so I just took a straight wire and connected from the Focusrite box into my consumer audio system, and I was picking up noise. And that's because it was no longer a balanced connection. I didn't have the noise reduction capability that balanced connections offer and it didn't have the low impedance input on the consumer electronics which also helps reduce the noise and so because of that i wasn't really very satisfied with the way that things were working so bottom line is the most common way you see people hook up pro sound gear to consumer gear is just to get an adapter or a cable that goes from a three-wire connection on one end to a two-wire connection on the other and people say, hey, according to the science, this will be just fine. Well, I'm here to tell you that in my experience, it's oftentimes not just fine. You lose the balanced cable noise reduction characteristics. It doesn't apply the correct load to the outputs of the ProSound gear. And oftentimes you suffer in audio quality when you make that kind of connection. But of course, that's the cheap way to go. It just requires the appropriate adapter cable. So what would be a better solution? Well, a better solution would be to run the audio through a transformer. Because the transformer can take a balanced input and on the other side of the transformer, step up or step down that signal in level and provide an unbalanced output that would go into your consumer audio system. And that would be a technically correct solution. And so where do you get a transformer? Well, there's a lot of audio transformers in the market and some are actually very good. And the most common place where you see audio transformers used in the pro sound world is in instrument direct boxes, a DI box. Now, generally with the DI box, we're taking a balanced signal as the output and we're putting in an unbalanced signal from a musical instrument. And with an active DI box that has to be respected. But with a passive DI box, the only thing a passive DI box is really is a transformer. And so we can just flip that box around and we can actually push our input into the three pin XLR connector on the DI box, the balanced input. And we can drive a signal right through that transformer and it will appear on the unbalanced output, which could then go into our consumer audio system. Now, of course, since the DI box is intended to run in the other direction, the connectors on it will probably be backwards. So you might need some connector adapters to get your signal to attach to that box and go in the direction that you want it to go. But that's a solution for you, is you could put a a DI box on the output of your balanced output from ProSound gear 
and use the unbalanced side of the DI box to go into your consumer electronics. And that would be a technically correct solution for transforming those balanced outputs to an unbalanced signal with the appropriate loading. Now, the audiophiles among us would cringe at this because running your audio through a transformer always has some impact on the fidelity. It's going to have a little bit of impact on the frequency response and the transient response. And so I think for 95 out of 100 people, they'd say it sounds just fine. But the rarefied audiophiles among us would sneer at this and say, you don't really want to run your audio through transformers. So the best solution would be a box with active electronics in it. A box that is designed to take in a balanced signal at pro sound level with the proper loading on it. And it would go through an op amp inside of it. And the output of that would be scaled appropriately and sent out to your consumer electronics. Now this is an extremely simple circuit. It's basically just a single op amp with a few support components. But it's not a super popular solution because it's the most expensive of the bunch. You need an adapter box, which is going to incur a little more price. And since not a whole lot of people are doing it this way, these types of adapter boxes are not as common as some other products. But that's the proper solution. And that's what I ended up with when making an interface from my computer audio, which had balanced output, over into consumer audio, which had unbalanced input. And by doing that, I was able to get pristine fidelity and a noise floor that is almost non-existent. And so I was able to run the output from the Focusrite box, which is balanced pro audio, all the way across the room, about 15 feet or so, into this adapter box. And because it's balanced audio, because it's pro sound level and it's going into a proper load at the other end, it didn't pick up any noise in the environment. None of the radio frequency noise or noise from other equipment in the room was able to impart itself into that cable. And because of that, I got a really great low noise floor as a result. So that's my recommendation. Of the three ways of doing this, either just an adapter cable, transformers, or a proper solution of a conversion box that goes from balanced audio to unbalanced audio. And that's what yielded the best results for me. I'll provide some links below for these different methods of doing this so that if you need to do this sort of thing, you can pursue that as well. Now, one final note is that with the balanced audio output from my Focusrite audio interface box, I could have directly run balanced cables from that into a ProSound power amp and had good results. I could have directly run balanced cables into a pair of powered studio monitor speakers that have ProSound balanced inputs, and that would have worked great. But I wanted to run that output into my consumer type hi-fi system. And so to do that, I needed to make these changes to the signal level and the uh, impedance to make it work right. So hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit of insight as to what works for me and what will probably work best for you as well. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you're here and I hope that you choose to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe to the channel, I would also suggest that you hit that bell icon so that you're notified when new content drops and don't miss anything good. Talk to you again soon.